Hello everyone, this is your instructor in business laws and regulations and for today our topic is general provisions of partnership. Since this topic is a very long topic, ang gagawin natin, hahatiin natin to into several parts and for today ang ating pag-uusapan ay yung part 1 ng general provisions. Let's start by defining partnership. Yung definition ng partnership ay makikita sa Article 1767 of the Civil Code of the Philippines. So yung laws governing partnership ay makikita sa Civil Code. So parang law on obligations and contracts lang din. Di ba yung law governing obligations and contracts ay makikita sa civil code. So under Article 1767 of the Civil Code, by the contract of partnership, two or more persons bind themselves to contribute money, property, or industry to a common fund with the intention of dividing the profits among themselves. Two or more persons may also form a partnership for the exercise of a profession. Ang sabi dito sa first sentence, ang partnership daw ay contract. A partnership is a contract. Di ba? Sa Law on Obligations and Contracts, napag-aralan nyo kung ano ang contract. Napag-aralan nyo kung ano ba ang kontrata. A contract is a meeting of minds between two persons whereby one binds himself with respect to the other to give something or to render some service. So basically, ang partnership ay kontrata kasi may meeting of minds. Yung mga partners. Meron silang agreement na mag-contribute ng money, property, or industry. Yung isang tao, nag-offer siya sa isang tao na bumuo sila ng partnership. Inaccept naman ng isang tao na yon. So there is a meeting of minds. By the contract of partnership, two or more persons bind themselves. Meaning to say, hindi lang dalawang tao ang pwedeng mag-enter sa isang partnership. Pwedeng higit pa sa dalawa. Kaya sinabing two or more persons. Ngayon, itong two or more persons na to, Magko-contribute sila ng money, property, or industry. Pwede silang mag-contribute ng money. Pwede din silang mag-contribute ng property. Pwede din silang mag-contribute ng industry. Of course, yung money, pera yan. Yung property, this pertains to the property, plant, and equipment. PPE. Gaya ng land o lupa, ano pa, building, ano pa, machinery, ano pa, equipment, etc. Pwede din silang mag-contribute ng industry. So, in the absence of money or property, or in concurrence with money or property, the law permits the contribution of industry. Kapag sinabing industry, this may be either personal manual efforts or intellectual efforts. In other words, ito yung services or skills. Ito yung services or skills. So, hindi lang money at property ang pwede nilang i-contribute. Pwede din ang industry or services or skills. 
Ang tanong, bakit sila nagko-contribute o bakit sila magko-contribute ng money, property, or industry? There is a contribution of money, property, or industry because they have an intention. Meron silang intention. And of course, that intention is to divide the profits among themselves. That is intention is to divide the profits among the parties or among the partners. They form a partnership mainly for profit. Kaya sila nag-form ng partnership para makihate dun sa profit if ever may profit ang partnership. Of course, it follows na kapag may net loss, of course, magsishare din sila doon sa losses. So, this first sentence deals or refers to a business partnership. This is a partnership that is formed mainly for profit. Bakit business partnership yung tinutukoy dito sa first sentence? Obviously, ang pinag-uusapan ay contribution ng money, property, or industry at higit sa lahat, ang pinag-uusapan ay intention of dividing the profits among the partners. So meaning, the first sentence refers to a business partnership or a partnership formed mainly for profit. So halos lahat ng provisions na pag-aaralan natin will deal with business partnership. So, bakit kailangan nyong malaman na yung pinag-uusapan dito o yung tinutukoy dito sa first sentence ay business partnership? Of course, para malaman nyo na yung pinag-uusapan talaga dito ay business partnership. Yung second sentence kasi, describe lang niya yung general professional partnership. Ang tinutukoy dito sa second sentence ay general professional partnership or GPP. So let's expound the general professional partnership or GPP. So, what is a general professional partnership? Ano nga ba ang general professional partnership? A general professional partnership is a partnership formed for the purpose of practicing a common profession. Meaning to say, ito yung partnership na kung saan yung mga partners meron silang common profession or same profession. Take note na ang purpose nila is to practice the common profession. Para mas lalo nyong maintindihan ang general professional partnership, magbibigay ako ng examples. Example number one, A and B, both certified public accountants, can form a general professional partnership to go into public accounting. Si A ay CPA at si B ay CPA. So they have common profession. Pareho sila ng profession. And aside from that, they have a common field of practice. Ang field of practice nila ay public accounting. So, they have a common profession and at the same time, they have a common field of practice. And because they have a common profession and at the same time, they have a common field of practice, they can form a general professional partnership. 
Another example, C and D, both lawyers can form a general professional partnership to practice law. Si C ay lawyer at si D ay lawyer. So they have common profession. Pareho silang lawyer. Pareho sila ng profession. And aside from that, they have a common field of practice. Ang field of practice nila ay law. So they have a common profession and at the same time, they have a common field of practice. And because they have a common profession, they have a same profession, and at the same time, they have a common field of practice, they can form a general professional partnership. Another example, E, a lawyer, and F, a certified public accountant, cannot go into the practice of taxation as a general professional partnership. C, E, at F, Pareho sila ng field of practice. Ang field of practice nila ay taxation. Pero take note, hindi pareho ang kanilang profession. Si E ay lawyer at si F ay CPA. So, they do not have a common profession. So, they cannot go into the practice of taxation as a general professional partnership because they do not have a common profession even though they have a common field of practice. Again, they cannot go into the practice of taxation as a general professional partnership because they do not have a common profession even though they have a common field of practice. Another example, G, an architect, and H, an engineer, cannot form a partnership that will qualify as a general professional partnership. Si G ay architect at si H ay engineer. Hindi pareho ang kanilang profession. So, they cannot form a partnership that will qualify as a general professional partnership because they do not have a common profession. Next, another example, I and J, both certified public accountants in partnership selling business machines, are not in a general professional partnership. Si I at J ay may parehong profession. Pareho silang certified public accountants. Pareho silang CPA. Yun nga lang, um, yun nga lang kasi, hindi sila nagpa-practice ng common profession. Ang partnership nila ay engage sa pagbenta ng business machines. Their joint activity is business, not the practice of a common profession. So that partnership is not a general professional partnership. Hindi yan general professional partnership. Para ma-qualify yung partnership as a general professional partnership, tandaan nyo lang itong tatlong elements na to. Always remember these three elements. First, the partners have a common profession. Second, the purpose is to practice the common profession. And third, no part of the net income is derived from engaging in any trade or business. Take note, dapat mamit lahat ng elements na yan 
para ma-qualify ang partnership as a General Professional Partnership or GPP. Next, aside from the fact that a partnership is a contract, a partnership is also a business organization. A partnership is both a contract and a business organization. Diba, there are three forms of business organization. Yung una ay sole proprietorship, yung pangalawa ay partnership, at yung pangatlo ay corporation. A sole proprietorship is a business organization owned by only one person. Iisa lang ang nagmamayari sa sole proprietorship. A corporation is an artificial being created by operation of law. It is an artificial being or an artificial person kasi nga hindi siya totoong tao. Hindi siya totoong tao gaya natin. Pero, pero kasi sa mata ng batas, it's as if tao siya. Okay? So, artificial person siya kasi nga hindi siya totoong tao gaya natin. Pero sa mata ng batas, it's as if tao siya. A corporation is created by operation of law. Anong ibig sabihin ng created by operation of law? A corporation does not come into existence by the mere agreement of the parties. So, hindi porke may agreement Yung parties sa corporation ay nag exist na ang corporation. Of course, dapat ma-meet muna ng corporation yung mga requirements of law governing its creation. So, hindi porke may agreement na yung parties sa corporation ay nag exist na ang corporation. Dapat ma-meet niya muna yung mga requirements of law governing its creation. So again, aside from the fact that a partnership is a contract, a partnership is also a business organization. Let's proceed to the characteristics of a contract of partnership. Para mas madali niyong matandaan itong characteristics ng contract of partnership, bibigyan ko kayo ng mnemonics. Ang ating mnemonics ay CONPRI by MONOPRI 1. CONPRI by MONOPRI 1. Yan ang ating mnemonics. Itong mnemonics na to, makakatulong to para mas madali niyong ma-memorize yung characteristics of a contract of a partnership. So, yung una ay CON. Yan ay consensual. Kapag sinabing consensual, it is perfected by mere consent of the parties. So, the moment na meron na yung consent ng lahat ng partners, perfected na ang contract of partnership. So, the moment na meron ng agreement ang lahat ng partners, perfected na ang contract of partnership. Next, pre. Yan ay principal. When we say principal, it does not depend upon any other contract for its validity or existence. So, the contract of partnership can stand alone. Kasi nga, hindi siya nakadepende sa ibang kontrata para maging valid or mag-exist. Take note, if the contract depends upon any other contract for its validity or existence, it is an accessory contract. So, kung yung kontrata 
ay nakadepende sa ibang kontrata para maging valid or mag-exist, ang tawag sa kontrata ay accessory contract. Accessory siya. So, ang contract of partnership, ito ay principal contract. Hindi ito accessory contract. It is a principal contract because it does not depend upon any other contract for its validity or existence. Next, by mu. Yan ay bilateral or multilateral. It is entered into by two or more persons whose rights and obligations are reciprocal. Bilateral, if the partnership is entered into by two persons. Kasi nga, dun sa word na bilateral, by means two. Multilateral, multilateral naman if the partnership is entered into by more than two persons. Kasi nga, dun sa word na multilateral. Multi or multi means more than two persons. It is entered into by two or more persons whose rights and obligations are reciprocal. Rights and obligations are reciprocal. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, kung may rights and obligations yung isang partner, then meron ding rights and obligations yung other partner or other partners. Next, no. Yan ay nominate. Kapag sinabing nominate, it has a special name given to it by law. Ano ba yung special name na binigay ng batas? Of course, partnership. Kapag may special name na binigay ang batas, that is a nominate contract. Kapag wala naman, that is a nominate contract. Di ba? Sa Law on Obligations and Contracts, pinag-aralan nyo yung nominate contracts at in-nominate contracts. Some examples of nominate contracts are contract of partnership, contract of sale, contract of lease, contract of loan. Those are nominate contracts. Yung innominate contracts naman, yan yung I give that you may do, I do that you may give, I do that you may do. So, wag nyong kalimutan yung mga napag-aralan nyo sa Law on Obligations and Contracts. Kasi nga, yung Law on Obligations and Contracts, yun yung pundasyon nyo sa law. That is your foundation. So, yung napag-aralan nyo sa Law on Obligations and Contracts, magagamit nyo yan or magagamit nyo yung mga yon until sa last law subject nyo. Kasi nga, yun yung pundasyon. Yun yung foundation nyo sa law subjects. Next, pre. Pre, that is preparatory. When we say preparatory, it is a means by which other contracts will be entered into as the partnership pursues its business. So, merong ibang kontrata na mag-aarise kapag pinersu ng partnership ang kanyang business. For example, contract of sale. Engage yung partnership sa pagbenta ng isang produkto. May contract of sale na mag-aarise between the partnership and the buyer. That is a contract of sale. mag yan between the partnership and the buyer. Another example, contract of lease. 
yung partnership ay engage sa pagpapaupa ng apartment. Of course, may other contract na mag arise And that is the contract of lease. That is the contract of lease between the partnership at yung umuupa. Next one. Yan ay onerous. The partners contribute money property, or industry to a common fund. The partners contribute money, property, or industry to a common fund. The partners contribute money or property or industry to a common fund because they want to get for themselves a benefit. They want to get for themselves a benefit through the giving of something. At yung benefit na yon ay of course yung share nila sa profits ng partnership. So, there are six characteristics of a contract of partnership. They are consensual, principal, bilateral, or multilateral, nominate, preparatory, and onerous. Let's proceed to the essential requisites of partnership. Since these are essential requisites, Dapat meron lahat itong requisites na to para may masabing partnership. First, there must be a valid contract. So, there must be an existence of a valid contract. In order for a partnership to exist, there must be a voluntary agreement among the parties to carry on the business as partners. Ang partnership kasi, it's a voluntary relation created by the agreement of the parties. So, dapat willing yung mga parties na mag-enter sa partnership at hindi sila puinersa. Meron kasi tinatawag na doctrine of delectus personae or personarum kapag plural At sinasabi ng doctrine na to na a person is free to choose those whom he wants to be associated with in partnership. So dapat malaya yung isang tao na mamili kung sino ang gusto niyang samahan sa partnership. The partners must be willing to enter into partnership and must not be forced to enter into a partnership. Since partnership is fundamentally contractual, all the essential elements of a valid contract must be present. So, present lahat ng essential elements of a valid contract. Napag-aralan nyo na to sa Law on Obligations and Contracts. Under the law, the following requisites must concur. First, consent of the contracting parties. Second, object certain, which is the subject matter of the contract. And third, Cause of the obligation which must be established. So, ang mnemonics dyan ay COC. Consent, Object, and Cause. Kapag sinabi pa lang essential elements of contract, ito yung mga elements na kung saan kapag wala itong elements na to, walang kontrata. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng essential elements of a contract. Next, there must be a mutual contribution of money, property, or industry to a common fund. Explicit naman doon sa Article 1767 na merong mutual contribution of money, property, or industry. Yung money, of course, cash yan, pera yan. 
Yung property, the property that may be contributed, may be real or personal, tangible or intangible. So, pwedeng real property, gaya ng lupa at building, pwedeng personal property, pwedeng tangible property, o pwedeng intangible property. Yung tangible property, ito yung property na nakikita at nahahawakan. Meron itong physical substance, gaya ng land, building, machinery, equipment, etc. Yung intangible property naman, ito yung property na hindi nakikita at nahahawakan. Wala itong physical substance, gaya ng credit rights. Yung industry naman, it may be physical manual efforts or intellectual industry. Meaning to say, ito ay services or skills. However, a limited partner may contribute cash or other property but not services. Yung limited partner, ito ay kind of partner. Ito yung partner na kung saan liable lang siya up to his or her capital contribution. So, yung liability lang niya is up to his or her capital contribution. Hindi siya pwedeng habulin up to his or her separate properties. So, itong limited partner na to, ang pwede niya lang i-contribute ay money or property. Pero hindi pwede ang industry or service. Next, third, it must have a lawful object or purpose. Partnership, being a contract, must have a lawful object. If a partnership has an unlawful object, it is void. So, paano ba masasabi na unlawful ang object? The object is unlawful when it is contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, or public policy. In other words, unlawful yung object kapag against siya sa law, morals, good customs, public order, or public policy. For example, si X at Y, nag-enter sila into a partnership. Yun pala, engage sila sa pag-manufacture ng illegal drugs. That is contrary to law. That is against the law. So, unlawful yung object. At dahil unlawful yung object, hindi valid yung partnership. The partnership is void. If such illegality constitutes a crime, the partners will be criminally prosecuted and the profits and effects and instruments of the crime will be confiscated in favor of the government. So, dun sa ating example kanina, i-confiscate ng government yung profits na na-derive dun sa pag-manufacture ng illegal drugs. At of course, hindi lang yon, I-confiscate din ng government yung mga ginamit sa paggawa ng illegal drugs. Kaya sabi dito, the profits and effects and instruments of the crime will be confiscated in favor of the government. Next, the partnership must be established for the common benefit or interest of the partners, which is to obtain profits and to divide the profits among the partners. So, the very purpose of a business partnership is to obtain profits. That is the very reason for existence of partnership. Evident naman yan sa definition of partnership. Ang sabi doon, 
with the intention of dividing the profits among themselves. However, if a partnership is formed for the practice of a common profession, its primary purpose is to render service to the public. Meaning to say, kung ang partnership ay general professional partnership or GPP, ang primary purpose niya ay hindi para makaobtain ng profit. But rather, ang primary purpose niya ay public service. Kapag business partnership, ang primary purpose niya ay to obtain profits. Kapag general professional partnership naman, ang primary purpose niya ay to render public service.